How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tears in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes. People have been asking me about Rachel Cushing, a mysterious figure from the North. When I was asked to enter the Schmodown, when I was asked, when I was begged by the fans to come into the Schmodown, I thought, how best to enter the Schmodown world? This is going to be the first step into a larger world. That's from Star Wars. Thank you. We are here to compete. We're not here for a sideshow. When everyone else is shouting, we are here to win. Boom. Look, you have Clark Wolf, who has become a damn superstar in this league, yes. paired up with the former champion, Mark Riley, and let's see what the two of them are going to do together. You had the decision where JTE had reached out to Clark and said, hey, you'll be my teammate, and she shocked everyone by announcing that the then champion was going to be her teammate. And your winner! Playing for the titles against the Patriots, they are Clark Wolf. <laughs> Yeah, man. Woo Title shot. Yeah. I knew we can do it. And Clark, I know you want a belt. You know, Mark Riley, I want a belt. Very, I, I am personally very saddened by your loss here today. Mark Riley, you are still the reigning movie trivia champion. That I singles. am. That I am. Fine. Is Con Air? Oh. Mark Riley has been eliminated. Uh, what's next for me is uh, I'm a veteran in this league. You are. It, I feel it. I'm taking a step down. You are? For, uh, I don't know for how long, but I'm definitely going to stop competing in the movie trivia league at this point. We should have gotten those damn belts. It was, it was a little too close for me. Okay. I know you're retired and everything for now, but can we have one more go? All we had to do was ask. Let's do it. Woo! I think that we are getting to a place as a team where we are learning each other's strengths and weaknesses, learning how to cover each other's backs, like we were saying. So I'm, I'm really glad that as a team we've made it that far, and I think, I think we're ready to keep going. And your winner! Yes! Advancing into the finals! You know, you've, you've talked about it a little bit, and, and there's been rumblings about it, that this could have been your last match, you know? What's next for Wolves of Steel and what's next for you? Well, yeah, unfortunately I gotta stick to what I said and what I need to do, which is step down for a while. I, like I've said, I really wanted that belt. The thing that stings so much is to get that close and letting my partner down because I've been wanting to get that belt on her Did shoulder. Well, think. When the Lions Den commences yeah. with this member, yeah. all hell will break loose. Oh, okay. Period. Yeah. What? what? No, get out! I do not believe what I am witnessing. Ken is part of the what? Ken, what's what's going on? What happened out there? I didn't want to interrupt your interview, but Dagnino? We started so strong. I didn't want to get in your path. I I failed. I, I don't failed in that. defeating them. How, how, it, it how can once. we defeat them? We can't defeat them. We can. There is absolutely a way. I know we can. I know we can do it together. You're right. All right. Nerds We're doing ones. this. Partners. Partners. Come here. Rachel Cushing is here. Rachel waiting for Ken to come out of the side. Rachel, where is Ken Knapsack? Can we get Ken Knapsack, please? I'm sure he's just running a little behind. Three, two, chicken pox. And your winners by way. I am so, so sorry. I almost missed my opportunity to congratulate these guys. No! Whoa. Whoa. No! Whoa. And that sucker just turned his back on Rachel Cushing. Unbelievable. Left her to try. This is my time. My time. I don't need any of you. I don't need Rachel. I have new friends now. I have new power. And this, for once in my life, 
is about me. You're all right? You feel good? I'm good. I'm good, Ken. Don't worry about me. Okay. Okay. You know, you could have avoided this if you just chose to stick by my side sooner. This. I propose that you and the new love of your life, Dagnino, pair up as a team, and I will find a teammate to take you down. I accept. I accept that challenge. 30 minutes Iron Man match for the Star Wars Movie Trivia Showdown Championship of the World. How many times has normal rate did Han offer to pay Jabba if he would spare his life? Sam, make it true. And you're uh, What just happened? Movie what just happened? Oh my goodness! Star Wars! after the clock ran out. Shouldn't no question count. about that. Shouldn't, shouldn't count. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. I just I just wanted to let you both know, as I'm sure you filled Tom in, that we will be playing a team match oh, next yeah. season. Oh yeah, be her and a partner. So yeah. No, next, I don't think so, because uh, I have a partner. I found that person. Hey, partner. Oh, did you think that we were going to leave you hanging again? <clears throat> of course it's me. Shire Wolves. Um, we talked it over, and your offer to join your faction next month, that's not really gonna work for us. Listen, I totally understand. You guys have both been performing no, really no, well. No, 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 no. We wanna join you now. That's amazing. Today, the Lions Den and the Shire Wolves, and joining me today, it is the former two-time champion of the world, Mark Yodi Riley is Thank here. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, especially for today, because I have I have somebody in the in in, in this competition fight. that I am rooting for, and I'm not afraid to say it. And the Shire Wolves are my team. I can't wait to watch them in action for the first time. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, and listen, uh, and, and plus the fact that I have Shire Wolves stickers on my uh, computer. Probably I am going to get some stickers myself. And we've already we've already heard the, the bias from the the, fact, the bias calls from the Lions Den. But you sure, and I are, are we are fair. We are going to is going to be Absolutely. a fair match. But look at what happened with this particular match and what has happened. The storyline in between this thing is is incredible because you look at the the team of. Ken Knapsack and Tom Dagnino, and the way that that all came to be was that Ken and Rachel were teammates. Teams, yeah. Good, uh, good teammates. Some said at first, some thought that Ken was the one who brought Rachel into the league, when in reality, yeah. it was Clark Wolf at the Schmodown Spectacular One to where she was listening to Rachel answer questions in the crowd and ran up to me and said, you have to put her in the league. It was Clark Wolf who first noticed Rachel Cushing. That's right. Not to take anything from Ken. Ken brought her into the league, helped her out, sure. they had the team, and then he, you know, was absolutely despicable and turned on her. But yeah, that was that was the uh, the shot heard around the world, including yeah. still reverberating through this studio right now, and he is not well liked, and neither is his uh, partner. You know, his manager and in the Lions, and the Lions then themselves have been a force to be reckoned with. You look at everything that they have done. The team champions are still the Patriots. They've been champions for a long time. Yeah, and especially yeah, after we had this match, the, the big controversial match with top 10, they're still the champions. However, you look at what was going to happen, who Rachel Cushing was going to team up with, what was going to, 
wh- how would it go down? Everyone was rumor. It was a rumor. Would it be Clark Wolf? Would it be Clark Wolf? And it indeed was Clark Wolf. And then would they join Emma? Would they join Emma? And they indeed did. They joined Emma. They're not trying to pull surprises. No. They're trying to form something very special, and they have so far. It is the Shire Wolves. It is Emma Fife. It is Mark Andreco, and it is the Star Wars champion Sam Witwer, yeah. who can't be here today. But that's a that's a hell of a faction. That right? is a faction to be reckoned with. Yeah. And this and this for our first match with the Shire Wolves, we know. Clark Wolf knows her trivia. We know Rachel Cushing knows her trivia. How do they work as a team? That's interesting. I know I can work with Clark Wolf. She is a classy competitor, and Rachel Cushing is just wonderful. So I think these two are really going to do something dynamic. Well, let's hear what they're going to talk about right now. Tom, you're here. You know it. I'm here, too. We're here because Rachel, the crusher Cushing, challenged me to a contest, and through some chicanery, she found herself a partner, the great Clark Wolf, a legend of the game. So to speak. She beat Finstock once. What? Uh, by, by the hair of her chinny chin chin. And, and now we're here. Now the time has come for us to unite two of the greatest players we've ever seen here in the Schmodown. Absolutely, absolutely. They are an intimidating duo, and they are intimidating on their own. I can't wait to compete with them. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Shire Wolves. Oh, hey. Hello, hello. Oh, hey. Thank you. Oh, hey, girl. Hey. Sometimes, people, the hype train rolls out of the station in front of the actual results that will eventually happen. And I think that, I still think she's a future champion, but I think sometimes that ship comes into port too soon. You know what I mean? Yeah, and never since they joined Emma Fife's crew. Oh, yeah. What a whack job crew that is. A lot of people believe that Ken is the reason that I joined the league in the first place almost a year ago. But the truth is, Clark is the reason, because one day last year, we were sitting on the sidelines watching a match. I might have mouthed a few answers. She looked over at me and afterwards said, you need to be playing out there in the ring. And as you all know, that was quite the leap for me to make. But with her behind me, since day one, um, I think I've proved myself. And for us to come together, it uh, kind of feels like destiny. The Patriots are still the champions. So Patriots are still the champions. Yeah. Absolutely. You could just you could just pause and, and just you could use this at any point in time. You could cut this back into any promo uh, later on. The Patriots are still the champions. You could use that any time you want, cameraman. Just put it all together in iMovie, and you're okay. I want a belt. I want this team belt. There's no cutesy little bullshit anymore. I'm coming for those team belts. Yes. This is it classy and sassy? I, I love the sassy's coming out. Little, we love it. Little, little southern sassy. We might be called the lion's den, but today we're the dream crushers. And bottom line, Shire Wolves and whatever her faction is called, you're all losers. Lots of shots fired. Um, you know the no surprise. The Lions Den talking about hype, talking about how they've seen hype happen before. They mentioned the Patriots are still the champions. Obviously, um, Ken doesn't seem like he's sweating this at all. Dagnino is not sweating this. He's no. played uh, Clark Wolf before in the past. He lost, but he, he but he did hold his own. Yeah. And then you see the Fife Club. And you see what the Shire Wolves. How much this means. And the thing that stood out to me was Clark Wolf. She is, we know Clark Wolf. She she can be sassy and classy, but yep. the thing is she wants that team belt. Absolutely. She made it clear. She has her teammate, and we're ready to go. I can't wait. But there's the tail of the tape right here, obviously, with the Lions Den. You got 80s movies. You got romantic comedy movies. You've got being just awful, awful people is the strength true. of theirs. Very and true. Then, and then if you switch on over to the Shire Wolves, you have horror films, mm. Oscar films, and being some of the classiest individuals to beat despicable people that we've ever seen. That's, that's, a, that's a very that's true a strength. and you know a very strength. good strength. Thank you. All right, I'm ready to go. Are you? I am ready to go, Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia. <laughs> Introducing first, representing the Lion's Den. Making their team debut, they would like to be known as the Dream Crushers. Give it up for Tricky Tom Dagnino and the Pit Boss Ken Napsok, the Dream Crushers. Look, that's that is awful. That is awful. You are awful. 
Look at them. They're dressed like homeless people. Uh, yeah, I know. They're, they're just yeah. walking. They slept on the street last night Ken drinking to, too much. Ken used to walk around in suits. Now he's like he's transformed into a, a piece of. He's like baby Dagnino, like baby Groot. The yeah. Name's, uh, the name's Bobby Gucci, you clown. Well, you, your face is stupid. But that's my name. <laughs> All right. All right. Bobby Gucci, thank you. And their opponents. Representing the Fife Club. Making their Schmodown team debut. Rachel the Crusher. Cushing. Classy. Clark Wolf. The Shire Wolf. There's their manager. Uh, manager Emma Fife coming out. of the Fife Club. And uh, there's Rachel whoa. Cushing. The Crusher. We got the the, we got the peaches coming in. The peaches in. are the coming in. Peaches Look at that. In. The Rockford peaches are here. This is fantastic. And they're ready. You know what, what an entrance what already. An entrance. What an entrance. You did not expect anything less. When I was partners with Clark Wolf, we would know how to do it. We know yeah. how to enter And they are continuing the tradition now. I love this. Look at Emma Fife already being an amazing manager, sh shaking the hand. She's not gloating for the camera like another manager that I know that yeah. comes in and just smiles at the camera. She's more concerned about her players and not herself. That's right. She's right. a good person. Right. Okay, so round number one is going to work like this. We're going to give eight questions to the competitors. They're going to write their answer on the board. They have 15 seconds to answer the question. Don't forget about the JTE rule. Don't forget about the challenge rule. Ladies, do you have any questions? Are you ready yeah, to go? Yeah, I have questions. I, I didn't ask you. Ladies, do you have any questions? Are you go ready ahead, to go? lady. Ask your question. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Well, lady. <gasps> The ladies love me. What do you got? Um, spelling. Yeah. I mean, how close do we have to be here? You can't. If I like, ask what you, kind of game are we playing? If I, here? if I ask you who uh, played Black Panther, the the star of Black Panther, you can't say Chazik Bosman. That I was won't, damn close. I won't give that, that to so you. Close. And it I was so close. It cost me. It cost me. And I won't give me. you. Look, I know I'm here yeah. to be kept down. I know that. And so. I won't give you Damien Kazil. Chips are stacked against me yes, per Clark. usual. How, uh, how many of the JCE rules do we get? We have three for the entire okay. match. Copy. Shire rules, are you ready? Yes. Ready. Lions Den, are you ready? Yeah, born. Yeah, you want us to be ready. Born, then born. Let's get ready to Schmona! Yeah! All right, round number one, question number one. In the realm of dramas, in Devil's Advocate, who plays Keanu Reeves' new boss and the devil himself? I like this movie. A lot. I really like this movie. This movie is underrated. It's a bit campy, but I think it's, sure, it's awesome. That's, that's the goodness. I like of it. it. I like it. Five, four, Three, two, one. Pens down. Clark. Hua! Al Pacino. Correct. Right. Ken. Al Pacino. Correct. Rachel. Al Pacino. And Moron. You know, I met him in an uh, ice cream uh, okay. store. Okay, show your hands. Uh, Al Pacino. Pacino. Sure. All right, there you go. All right, everyone. Question number two comes in the category of comedies. Comedies. Bill Murray starred in 1993's Groundhog Day opposite which actress? Some groans in the crowd. I mean, I feel like uh, I feel like I've been here before. Five. I've done this before. Haven't four. You? Three. Two. One. Pens down. Pens down, Daniel. Ken. Don't drive angry. Andy McDowell. Correct. Correct. Rachel. Andy McDowell. Correct. Tom. Uh, Shelley Duvall. Incorrect. incorrect. She's talented. Oh! That's nonsense. Really talented. And Andy, oh! Andy McDowell. That's correct. Thank you. We'll that was be, quick we'll, on the five too, man. That was real quick on the five. We will look at your penmanship the too. There. Okay. Good there you go. You can use your JTE rule if you wanted to. Besides, I was, I was, I, was as, as Roke also knows, scribble will not be tolerant. Mm. That's right. Ooh. Here we go. Next question. I get a groan, but there we go. Too soon. Here we go. Next question. I'll play the heel. Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. This 2006 M. Night Shyamalan film that revolved around a swimming pool starred Bryce Dallas Howard, Paul Giamatti, and Jeffrey Wright. Furiously riding Furiously. down there. This is a competitive game. Look at them. Yeah. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Rachel. Lady in the water. Correct. Tom. Correct. Tom. Uh, Lady in Agua. Yeah, that's, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. We'll accept it. He's got it. He's got it. Clark. Lady in the water. And Ken. Correct. Lady, Lady in the water. Can I get a... Is, is this too late to change some things with this guy? Agua? Yeah, I'll go. Wow. Okay. Well, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> well, we got a lot of Spanish fans out here. All right. All right. Here we're we go. Be, you know, among the two. All right. Yeah, I like it. I know. A little beef already. Question number four. Unbelievable. Question number four comes in action adventure. 
Lord Humongous is the name of the main villain from which film in the Mad Max franchise? That's a good question. It is a good question. Yeah. You got to give a shout out there to Chris Kolesky yeah. and, um, and his team of writers. Yeah, it made me think a little bit. And I just looked at the answer. Five, four, three, <clears throat> two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, Rachel. Tom. Thunderdome? That's incorrect. Incorrect. Ra uh, uh, sorry, Clark. And Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome? That's incorrect. Okay. Ken. Uh, look, man, I didn't go to Bernie, man. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. That's incorrect. Okay. And Rachel. I started writing Road Warrior. That would have been correct, but you didn't get it. So it is the Road Warrior. Wow. Man, next to us. Nobody, it? Gets Nobody, it. Gets Nobody gets it. Nobody gets Tina it. Tina Turner was it. It was a tough question. I'll give yeah. you that. I'll All give right. you that. So next question here is in animated. Animated. Who voiced the lead character of Emmett in the Lego movie? Such a charming movie. I love that movie. I love that movie. We still haven't done a, a sequel. Tom no, Dagnino is perplexed any time you ask him about animated. I don't think he's seen an animated movie. No, he is an animated character. Five. He is. Four. Not good animation, though. Three, two, one. Clark Wolf. Uh, Chris Pratt. Correct. Ken. <laughs> I totally guessed. Chris Pratt. Correct. Nice. Rachel. Chris Pratt. Yes, and Tom. George Clooney. <laughs> 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 Incorrect. That's close. Been. Shire Wolf's yeah, taking right. a two-point lead, but Ken is playing very well. Tom has missed two. If the movie was made like ten years earlier, that would have been it. <laughs> Speaking of which. We're doing pretty good. Uh, 80s movies. Here we All go. All right. The next question, 80s movies. Your <laughs> question. Who plays Inigo Montoya in the cult classic The Princess Bride? Clark Wolf off and running. Yeah, right Clark Wolf wrote this before we even asked the question. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Ken. Uh, Mandy Patinkin. You got Correct. it. Rachel. Mandy Patinkin. Tom. Carrie Elways. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy Patinkin. All right, so Ken Knapsack here, keeping the Lions keeping alive. alive. Ten seven. It's good in the 10, movie. Ten seven. Though. Ten seven. As the Shire Wolves are kicking ass, but still, Ken Knapsack is playing great. It's ten seven here. I'm offended. Carrie Elways, come on. Next question here is the category of horror slash thriller. Oh, horror thriller. Ryan Reynolds, Rebecca Ferguson, and Jake Gyllenhaal starred in this horror thriller that took place on the International Space Station. Okay, Clark. This. Yeah. Clark, is Clark immediately, she's just dialed Clark in. is on fire right now. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Rachel. Life? Correct. That's correct. Tom didn't have it. Clark. <laughs> Life. And Ken. Oh, okay. Correct. I want you all to consider watching Fire in the Sky with D.B. Sweeney. Sorry, a good UFO movie. See, that's, that's, also that's a good thing. movie. I'll take it. Very good. But that, that shows you, though, that Ken can't afford to miss because no. Tom ain't getting nothing. I don't know that though. movie. All right. I don't Next know one. that movie. Yep. Your last question comes in the category of directors. Name the last film directed by Stanley Kubrick. <clears throat> that's a good question. I like that I like question. that question as well. Five, four, three, two, one. Mr. Gucci? I just got back from a party, similar. Uh, eyes wide shut. That is correct, <laughs> Clark. I was also at that party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, classy <laughs> and sassy. sassy. <laughs> And uh, Ken. We went together. Uh, my uh, seventh grade birthday party was similar. Eyes wide shut. <laughs> and Rachel. I have no funny quip. Eyes wide shut. <laughs> there it is. Okay. You got it. That's a funny So note. how about that for a debut? The Ooh. Shire Wolves only missing one apiece. It's 14 to 9. That is powerful. As we get into round number two, the Shire Wolves. The Shire Wolves here, 14 points as we hit round number two. And the second round is going to work like this. The wheel is going to come out. They will get six questions in any category. Now, they will spin the wheel. If they land on a category that they don't like the first time, they can spin again, unless, of course, it lands on opponent's choice. Then they have to take whatever their opponents choose for them. A wheel slice for today's match was sponsored by one of our Schmodown patrons on patreon.com slash Schmodown. The sponsored wheel slice for today's match is Dance Movies. Ooh. Dance Ooh. Movies Ooh. is sponsored. That cuts and that, deep. That has, that has cut deep for both the team we used to know as the Nerds Watch that sunk them at the Collider Collision last year. So what's going to happen? Is, is someone going to hit it? We'll find out in just a little bit. So the Shire Wolves, you guys have a 14 to 9 lead here. Would you like to go first or second? Let's go first. You're going to go first. There okay, so please we'll choose who wants, who wants to spin. 
All right, so the, and yeah. sending the, the crusher. The crusher's going to over. To crush the spin. Yeah, they look confident. Yeah, the, they the do. The confidence in these ladies is unbelievable. Barely breaking a sweat. And here it is. But that's how dangerous the Shire Wolves are. If they can both score seven points, seven that's going to be hard for teams to keep up with. No, I don't care who they've is. already got a great lead. And if they get something in their wheelhouse, oh. Action uh, adventure. Action adventure. They're going to spin again? Are they spinning Ooh. again? Spinning again, all right. Someone's yeah. scared. Someone's Confidence. scared. Confidence. Okay. No, it's a smart move. That's, if anything, action adventure. Dagnino can hang yeah, with we've that seen one. We've seen teams have strong first rounds and then get a category yep. they do. Uh-oh. 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 Wait. Uh-oh. And. Uh -oh. and uh -oh. oh, no! Yeah! We got a game now. Oh, uh, no. We got a game now. Oh, that no. That wedge comes okay, in. All right. But if anybody can handle it, it's these two. It, I know they can use their mind. They can use the multiple question. choice, and they can get through this. Six questions. Six questions. I'm a little known fact. I went to Juilliard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Classically All right. trained. Not true. Okay. Here we go. Question number one in dance. <laughs> question number one in dance. In order to achieve their dream of opening a recording studio, two friends must win their city's dance contest in what 2000s film? Wow. Multiple choice? Is it A, make it happen, B, take the lead, C, you got served, D, feel the noise? Can you repeat the options? Yes. Does it, that it, count? Yeah, no, no, for the, you can no, repeat the options. Oh, yeah. Okay. A, make it happen. B, take the lead. C, you got served. D, feel the noise. Uh, B. It's incorrect. The steal. Uh, D, feel the noise. Looking for C, you got served. C, you got oh, served. On. Nobody got it. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Question number two. In Save the Last Dance, the second piece of Sarah's Juilliard edition must be in what dancing style? Five. Hip hop. It's incorrect. Correct. The steal. Yeah, sure. Um, ballet. Contemporary. Looking That's the same thing. Not even no, close. No, it's not. That's incorrect. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, contemporary. It's so it's incorrect. Contemporary. Right. Yeah. contemporary ballet. Yeah, contemporary ballet. Contemporary yeah. hip hop. I mean. Yeah, close. right. So that is incorrect. No, adult Question. contemporary. What's she dancing? The, the Hall and Oats or something? And you're a dope. Okay, whatever. Moving on. You're a dope. Yeah, right. Question three. In the Full Monty. Who played Gaz Schofield, a former steel worker who forms a strip tease group in hopes of making enough money to pay his child support? I love this movie. Okay. We don't get enough full Monty questions. Oh. This is interesting. Is it Robert Carlyle? That's correct, correct for two points. Two points. Boom. They needed that one. Yep. It's good to see him. Yep. All right, next question here. Who directed Black Swan? Darren Aronofsky. Two more points. Yes. Two more points. Coming back a little bit here. All right. Okay. Which dance movie is set against the backdrop of a coal mining town? Okay. Footloose. That's incorrect. Correct. Okay. Okay. Sure. Flash dance? Looking for Billy Elliot. Billy oh. Elliot. Oh. Billy Elliot. What, the, the chess player? All right, so that is The chess one. player? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Violet works at a pizza restaurant before moving to New York in this dance film. Multiple choice? Is it A, Footloose, B, Honey, C, Coyote Ugly, D, Save the Last Dance? Coyote Ugly? That's one correct. point. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so still, 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 good. they still have a 10 point lead. That's they no, still have a 10 point they lead. Look, they struggled in this category, but it, it's a category that is not picked up. That lot. is not a, it's, that's not, that's going to sink most teams. Yeah. That's going to sink most they teams. Were, they were able to use multiple choice. They were to get a couple there. They are in this, these guys. Now the den. <laughs> good luck, the, the den. Den. Use the, your traps. The, use the, your den, traps the den is up, but look, this, this is not over for the den. They, they, can, they can come back yeah. pretty quick if yep. they have a strong around there's 80s up there there's action adventure there's charlie sheen there's sports movies can i spin this thing go fuck face <laughs> <laughs> that's his new nickname you don't spin that damn wheel spin the wheel 
What are you doing, science? This one's broke. There's no pitching clock. <laughs> there it is. That's All good. Right. That's good. Turn around, walk away. It's a decent spin. Well, the opponent's choice is still on that wheel as well. Yes, it is. All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. Here we go. Oscar movies. Oscar yeah. movies. Are you going to take that, guys? Oscar movies? They're going to take Oscar movies? Are you taking Oscar movies? Rachel's daring them. Rachel's yeah. daring them to take it. Rachel's. Rachel looks like Jaws. Yeah, she's just hovering there and in the water. You're gonna have to Oscar this. movies. You're gonna have Oscar movies yeah, we'll in five, four. No, we're gonna spin again. We're right, spinning right. again. They're spinning again. Spinning away this is a from the tense, Oscars. Tense match here. Tense match. I'm enjoying the hell out of myself. Me right too. It's a great match. Ten points. I know what you can do in that category. Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. Oh. Nope. Charlie oh, Sheen. Charlie That's appropriate. Sheen. Charlie right. Sheen. That's appropriate. Right. We'll take that. <laughs> Charlie. It is appropriate. You yeah. guys. All right. Charlie Sheen. All right, gentlemen. <clears throat> it's better. <clears throat> Your first question in the category of Charlie Sheen. <clears throat> Clint Eastwood plays a veteran detective who gets stuck with a rookie cop played by Charlie Sheen to chase down a German crook in what film? Five. Uh, multiple, multiple choice. choice. Is it A, the arrival, B, loaded weapon, C, shoot first, or D, the rookie? It's the, the, rookie. the rookie. For one That's point. Correct for one point. <laughs> the audience with I one boo. Very easy option. All right, question number two. What is the profession of Charlie Sheen's character in Machete Kills? Is that the one with Danny Trejo? Are you sure he was in that? Can we check IMDb? He was oh. in Five. that movie. Uh, multiple uh, choice. Uh, let's All go. Right. Multiple choice. Is it A, a hitman, B, a game show host, C, the President of the United States, or D, a Martin Sheen impersonator? Uh, the President. That's correct for, for one, one point. point. All right. Well, they got that one. All right. We're moving on to your third question, gentlemen. Which film saw Charlie Sheen join forces with Kiefer Sutherland, Oliver Platt, and Chris O'Donnell? Three Musketeers. Two Ken more points. grabs two points on that. And we move on to your next question. What team do the Indians defeat to win the pennant and advance to the playoffs in Major League? Major League One, right? Yeah. Major League One. Uh, the New York Yankees. That's two correct points. for two points. All right, and it's 19 to 15. Lines then coming back right now. <coughs> and your fifth question in Charlie Sheen. What state is the setting for the action hit 1984's Red Dawn? That's a good question. I Great like question. that question a lot. I'm impressed with the lines in here. This is a, this is a this strength is, of them. This Five, is. Four. Uh, multiple choice. Multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Montana, B, New Mexico, C, Oregon, D, Colorado? B, New Mexico? That is incorrect. incorrect for the steal. It's Colorado. One, that is one, one point. One point. That's a big steal. That is a big steal. All That's right. a good steal. <laughs> and your last question in Charlie Sheen. Gentlemen, who directed Charlie Sheen in 1987's Wall Street? Groans from the audience. Uh, yeah. Well, all, all uh, Oliver Stone. Stone. That's correct. All right, so points. we have a three-point lead three point here by the Shire Wolf. Trick question. Now look, you, if you look at what happened there, Number. the Shire Wolf still fought very, very hard and got themselves with a 10-point lead with a very strong, I mean, excuse me, very hard category with dance that movies. That was a tough one, yeah. Lions then hits one of their strengths, and Charlie Sheen does very well. We have three points here as we go into round number three, and round number three is going to work like this. The teams will get three numbers from 1 to 20. The first one will be worth two points, the second one is worth three, and the third one is worth five points. After hearing the first category, the teams will designate who gets the two, who gets the three, and then they can collaborate on the five. Shirewolves, you have a three-point lead. Three numbers, please. I'm going to go four, eight, and 19. Four, eight, eight, 19, and the den. We're going to go uh, 16, 17, and 18. 16, 17, uh, and 18. Gooden, Hernandez, and uh, I don't Strawberry. care. All right, so now we're going to have 16, 17, and 18 to start for the den. And we start with 16, and that is Cameron Diaz. Who's taking the two? Uh, that would be me. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, Cameron Diaz. What Cameron Diaz film 
featured both Bruce Willis and his ex, Demi Moore. Charlie's Angels? Need the whole title. Charlie's Angels full throttle? That's two points. That's two points. That's two points. That's a big pull for... Hold on. Yeah. I'd like to challenge okay, that. Okay, what's the challenge? What's the challenge? He, he, yeah, like he answered. No, I knew that was what it was, but I think it was film. Char- was Charlie's Angels? That was his answer. No, I thought Charlie's Angels no was going to be right. To the first film, he said Charlie's Angels. Okay, let's. Or to the the challenge. There's a challenge because of my, because of the way that I asked the question, uh, they felt I was leading the witness. I guess. <laughs> yeah, but it yeah. could have been more specific. Hold, hold right? on a second. So we're gonna get we're gonna get a challenge. The Shire Wolves have challenged this call because it, Tom gave an answer up top. I kind of led, uh, gave him a little bit more clues throughout my thing. So we're going to scratch the, the question entirely. It's gonna, we're going to scratch the question. We're going to give a second one. Two-pointer. Cameron Diaz's love interest of, of Stanley Ipkiss is from what film? Uh, that would be The Mask. Two points. Two points, okay. Two points for... So- Clark, Clark is fuming. And, they, don't like, uh, they don't like the mask. They don't right. really like the mask. Okay. It's a good comedy. <laughs> now, now, we get to, now we get to Ken Knapsack. Ken Knapsack. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ken, the category of action adventure. Action adventure. Carlos Gallardo played the title character in what movie? Five. Do you play for the A's? Four. Three. I'm going to have F you repeat that. Uh, repeat the question there. Uh, Carlos Gallardo played the title character in what movie? Five. Four. That's a broad question. Three. Two. El Mariachi. That's correct. That's correct. That's three points. That is correct. All right. So now we jump to the Shire Wolves. Now we jump to the Shire Wolves. I went to film school, everybody. Now we jump to the Shire Wolves. All right, you chose the number four, and that syncs up with the category of Spielberg films. Who would like to take it? I'll take it. All right, Clark. Who played the mother in 1982's E.T.? D. Wallace. Two points. Two points. Two points. She hits it. I had to pull it out of there, and she did it. All right, so we, right. we're bouncing back. We're bouncing back to the den here because Clark hit that. Clark hit it. So now she was we, also in Cujo. Now we jump back <laughs> to the den. Lions Den has their five pointer. If they miss it, it goes back to the Shire Wolves. If they hit it, they will still go back to the Shire Wolves, but they'll have a lead. So See? they have now number eighteen. Number eighteen dramas. Dramas. Here we go. All right, here's your five pointer. In 2014's Frank, who plays musician and Frank's aggressive sidekick, Clara Wagner? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. It's your second one. In 2014's Frank, who plays musician and Frank's aggressive sidekick, Clara Wagner? Five, four, three, Uh, two. Repeat the question. That's That's the last last one. one. In 2014's Frank, who plays musician and Frank's aggressive sidekick, Clara Wagner? Five, four, three, two. The answer is uh, Michelle Moynihan. That is incorrect. (laughs) Maggie Gyllenhaal is the answer. So now the Shire Wolves have two opportunities to win the game here. All right, Rachel's going to have a chance to win it with eight. With eight. All right, Rachel, your three-pointer in the category. Number eight, you chose Matthew McConaughey films. All right, all right, all right. Exactly. Who played the main child in Mud with Matthew McConaughey? Ty Sheridan. And your winner! Well, of course, Rachel. Well, 
Dragged them out. Tom Dagnino ran out. It's the second time he's been beaten by Emma Fife in less than three or four months here. And now the Shire Wolves are off to a good start. Little bit of a, of a scare there when it came to dance movies. And then obviously, uh, right up top of stupid ass Charlie's Angels. And now we're going to be talking to Jen Sturger, who is with the Shire Wolves and I think the Den. Here we go. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Emma Fife, the manager of the Shire Wolves. Emma, you got to be feeling pretty good about that last performance. You know, I am. It, it, it's, it's another win for me over one Tom Dagnino, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm racking them up now. And honestly, you know, these women, they played so well. I'm, I'm so proud of their performance today. I mean, obviously, they had an unbelievable round one. They each just missed one question, and Rachel, frankly, knew the answer, as anybody can see. She just needed a little more time to come up with it, which sometimes happens when you're up there under the lights. And let's just say uh, if the other team had spun dance movies, I don't think they would have done as well in that very difficult category as these two women did here. Absolutely. How are you feeling about their performance going forward? Listen, you know, any team, when they start out for the very first time together, there's a little bit of, of bumps in the road, stuff to overcome. In terms of this being a debut match between this team, obviously they've both played incredibly well on their own and, and as parts of other teams. But I think if today is any indication, these the, you're looking at the future team champions right here. Absolutely. Ladies, you scrapped tooth and nail for that match. It seemed like everything, you know, you had a great first round, a really strong first round, you were, and then you hit dance movies. And everything just kind of seemed to spiral out from there. Tell me how you were feeling that second round. I think it was, you know, a challenge. Not every wheel slice is going to go your way. That's how this game works. and. Our biggest thing today was to see how we played together, how we um, handled the pressure, how we navigated the questions, and honestly, I think we really kicked ass at that. We took our time, we talked to each other, we communicated, we did what a team needs to do to do really well, and we navigated a category that is not our strength and still got a number of points, did not allow for any steals, so I call that a win. And we also didn't play it safe. And I, that was a choice, that was on purpose, because we felt confident that even if we missed it, they probably weren't gonna get it too, so why don't we go for the two? And if we hit, we hit, and if we don't, fine. So, you know, I that's something I learned from playing with Riley in Wolves of Steel, was like, we, we played it safe a little bit, and it and it just, sometimes it works out, but sometimes it doesn't. So we made that choice, and I still, and I think it was the right choice. Were you Absolutely. guys at all concerned when you saw that they hit Charlie yes. Sheen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I mean, honestly, who else is that category for? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's how the game goes. When you get a not strength category and they get a strength category, that makes it a game. That's what makes it the schmodown. And it's, like I said, the thing I'm proud of is how we navigated that and how we came together and, uh, and then how we uh, ran round three to, to, to get the win, so. Absolutely. And then coming into that last round, obviously a little bit of controversy mm -hmm. uh, surrounding the question with Cameron Diaz. Yeah. Um, tell me your thought process with that, you know, how, how that was, obviously like it shook you a little bit. Yeah, well the, my thought process was that he was wrong. <laughs> he gave the wrong answer because Charlie's Angels is the name of the first movie and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle is the name of the second movie. So Tom answered the question wrong and so I'm glad we challenged. Yeah, I'm absolutely. glad we challenged and even though it didn't go in our favor uh, and I still firmly, as I don't know if you can tell, disagree <laughs> with, with that. giving them a new question. Yeah, exactly, with yeah. giving them a new question. Um, fortunately, we were able to pull it out in the end. Absolutely. Mark, you were watching that match. Tell me, were you, uh, when, you, when you saw that the Lions Den hit Charlie Sheen movies that second round, were you a little concerned? Um, not really. Knowing their inner work. <laughs> not really, because they're both drunk all the time. <laughs> So they don't know which Charlie Sheen movie they're talking about, but I do agree with Clark on the Charlie's Angels question. I thought that was a clear. There are two movies. If, it, if they said Charlie, if they had said Charlie's Angels two, that wouldn't count. The movie's full title on IMDb is Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, and you know, but but they didn't need it. I mean, it was just one of those things where it was a little bit annoying. And if they had lost, I'd be screaming because that. Me but too. because they won, it's a little less. It's it's still wrong, I think. Absolutely, don't burn down the new studio. We just <laughs> we just got here. Moving was a nightmare. I'm um, so. Guys, I have to ask you now, after today's win, who do you collectively want next? Very good question. Um, <laughs> certainly uh, down Patriots. the line, that is of course everybody's goal at this point, including ours. Um, I think the thing that when Clark and I came together as a team, the thing that we said was that we wanted to play, you know, whoever. 
whatever it takes to get to that belt. We are going to earn it. Clark talked about hype. We know we have been hyped up by the fans, and we're excited that you know we pulled out a win today to live up to that hype. But we plan on continuing to work hard to earn that. Um, so, yeah. So wh whoever's next, we'll take them on. This is definitely a team that puts in the work. As as Rachel said, she and Clark, they're, they're going to do whatever it takes in order to get that belt, which they obviously deserve. But they're going to prove that they deserve that belt, and they're not just going to cut the line and jump right to taking on the Patriots. Though that will happen. Mark my words. And there's no rush. I think that's the important thing. Rachel and I are not in a huge hurry. We're coming for those belts. I am getting those belts. We are getting those belts. I am going to have a belt, okay? You have one on right now. Extra no belts, question. gold belts. I'm very intense, as you can see, but uh, but I'm not in any hurry. And I think that that's something else I learned from the Wolves of Steel was all the expectation of like, well, you should have a belt tomorrow. And that's not how it goes. That's not how teamwork is. So I think for us, like, we're, we're ready for whoever's next, but there's no rush. And let's not forget, Emma, you still have that number one contender spot out there lurking. I do. Uh, Any it, chance you're cashing it in? You know, uh, I haven't made a decision regarding that as of just yet. As I say, obviously, I would be happy to give it to this team any day because I know in my heart of hearts that this is going to be the team that takes down the Patriots. However, I want them to do that when they feel ready. And right now, I think we just have a journey of proving how unbelievably talented and intelligent these women are ahead of us before we get there. Absolutely. Ladies, congratulations on your first win together. It's, I'm sure there's many more to come. Thank you. Ken Napsok, one half of the, the Lions Den today. Where's your partner? Tom is doing what any good manager is doing after your team or your players have been cheated. He's off to our uh, lawyer. Uh, we are uh, looking at some paperwork. We're looking at maybe some stuff, maybe filing something against this match. Just a lot of shenanigans going on in here. Filing so, something? Yeah, filing some paperwork to maybe reverse the decision of this match. You have two announcers who are openly rooting against us. You're a professional sports broadcaster, Jen. You know that you can't have favorites in I the game. I don't show any bias. I try not right. to. Right. You can't play favorites. They're actively rooting against us. Some of those questions were just softball questions. But then you, okay, softballs. They hit dance movies in the second round. That's hey, not. Here's a, can I give you a, a hot scoop? Okay. Hot scoop, Jen. After Rachel and I lost a match on a dance movie question, she went and studied it. She's, she's playing you out there. She's working you. It's a gimmick. She's saying, oh, I don't really know dance movies. She's been studying. I can, I can assure you that is true. Wow. So. Interesting insight there. Uh, so, but you guys hit Charlie Sheen right after that. And uh, came right back, and you were right back in the game. Yeah, we, we, uh, I will admit that, that that round should have been a little bit more in our favor. Like, Charlie Sheen is, is a spirit animal for Tom. Uh, me, with his performance. Possibly his father. <laughs> it, 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 possibly. And his performance in Young Guns is one of the best of all time. Regulators mount up. I mean, uh, I, I love Charlie Sheen's work, but uh, I, I just, it, we did falter a little bit there. I'll, I'll admit that. Uh, I thought we could have had some, some steals. I thought I should have answered, uh, you, you got served. Um, and I apologize to some of uh, my friends afterwards because I think they expected more from me in that round. But that's the way it goes. I feel, though, the game was won or lost in the third round, and that's where just uh, an air of shenanigans emerged. Were you at all disappointed with Dagnito's performance in the first round? There was a moment where I lost my cool. I, 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 I apologized to him profusely between rounds. I shouldn't do that. That's very unprofessional of me. He's a great player. He's a legend. He's one of the building blocks of the schmo down, and I shouldn't do that. He just, he, he, had a, he had a bad first round. Rachel used to always have bad first rounds, and I'd have to pull her out of that and pull us into the, the game, and she would then shine in the second and third round. So, you know, I, I've been there before. And then coming into that third round, how did you feel about the commissioner's decision to go ahead and give you guys a new question? Uh, rubbish. That's absolutely rubbish that we even got to that point. Tom answered the question correctly. All right. He had not completed uh, his sentence. There was still an ellipses kind of uh, forming on the edge of his mouth. He was he was forming the phrase full throttle. If you review the tape, much like if you go back to the Iron Man match and review the tape that the time ran out, you'll see that Tom was completing his sentence. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sorry that, you know, Tom was not here for me to actually ask him questions. He's doing um, important work. What is... Right. What does this mean going on, you know, going forward for you guys? I'm just waiting to see when I get my chance to take on Sam Witwer again for the Star Wars title. Uh, I know there's some other worthy contenders. At least they think they're contenders and they can sort that all out. I think contractually I do get a rematch and I think Tom's also looking into that at our office. He's, he's doing what a manager does. He doesn't just cheer on the sidelines. Uh, he's handling a lot of the Lions Den business.
Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Ken. I mean, you know, tough loss today, but I'm sure it, we'll be seeing more. It was a very tough loss. The biggest disappointment for me was that Mark Andreco didn't come out dressed as the Peaches second baseman Marla Hooch. I really was hoping that would happen. Back to you guys. Well, obviously, Dagnina ran off. He doesn't want to be there. Tom trying to cover for him and saying, uh, oh, oh, he had other things, other obligations or whatnot, and he, mm -hmm. again, blaming us and yep. blaming everyone else, blaming yep. the system. Um, but the Shire Wolves came to play. That's, when you when you have that kind of deficit, when you have dance movies, which is not a strong character, uh, excuse me, a category for most, yeah. and they still were up by 10 points. They were still up Impressive. by 10 points. Look, the Lions, and I'll give credit where credit's due. They hung in there. They got a good story, and they, and they answered some questions. That's great. But to walk out of there, look, any given schmodown day, you can have a match like this. But the Shire Wolves, they remain calm. They pulled it out with that last winning question. Hell of a match. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd be nervous if I was most teams out there looking at over at, and seeing the Shire Wolves coming. I'd be nervous. I mean, yeah. you have a lot of these new teams out there. See, that's the thing is that sh the, the Shire Wolves are 1-0. There are other teams, brand new teams, that don't have the experience of, say, the Shire Wolves because even though, yeah, Clark Wolf has played so many times and was Rookie of the Year and Rachel Cushing was Rookie of the Year, that doesn't mean that they can't play another team who's 1-0 here. That's the part of the brand new team. So who do they play next? Will it be the world's finest? Mm. You know, Will it be superhero news? Will it be, I mean, who the hell knows who it's going to be? Um, it could be only stupid answers. We don't know. There's going to be somebody that gets in the way of the Shire Wolves, and I would look out. Yeah, I would definitely look out. It was a hell of a match. And I'm glad to say that they did pull it out. Well, there you go, guys. That's the match for today. The Shire Wolves come out on top here, 25-22 over the Den. And I'm sure we're not going to hear the end of it between the Fife Club and the Lions Den. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't joined Patreon yet, become a patron today. You can get the link in the description. Please go ahead and do that. We just did our... Big first, our live event. I hope a lot of everybody who came out and saw it, enjoyed it, had a good time. We're going to be doing another one. Please, we're going to be posting those matches very soon. So thank you once again. For the great Mark Yodi Riley, I'm Christian Harloff, and we'll see you next time. What's up, Showdown fans? Frank here, and it was the highly anticipated debut of the Shire Wolves and their match against that pesky Lions Den. It's your Schmo Down Breakdown. And more winners! Clark and Rachel get off to an amazing first round, scoring 14 points. That's tied for the second most points scored by a debuting team. Meanwhile, the Lions Den, they hang around with their nine points of their own. Looking at the second round, this is where things got quite interesting when the Shire Wolves only earned 5 points on their spin. That's the lowest second round score by a team so far this season. Now even though the Lions then managed to close the gap late, the lead the Shire Wolves earned after the first round was enough to propel them to the 25-22 victory. Shire Wolves missed 5 questions on the day for an 80% accuracy. Looking back at last season, only 30% of winning teams had an accuracy rate of 80% or greater. And as for the Lions then, they had a less than stellar day answering 57% of their questions. If you want to find out all their stats from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every Saturday on YouTube and your podcast feeds. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown.